Hey guys, it's Quana. Come join with me as I talk about one of my all-time favorite romantic comedies, Pretty Woman. All right, so I already started setting up for this spread. And I just wanted to continue with my movie journal and talk about one of my favorite romantic comedies, Pretty Woman, starring Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. This movie came out in 1990 and I was way, way, way too young watching this movie, I will tell you that. I think I at least didn't see it in the theater. I saw it whenever it came on HBO, but I was probably at least nine years old. And the reason why I say that I was too young to be seeing this movie is because I was under the impression that Pretty Woman was rated PG-13, but alas, it's rated R. That shouldn't be that much of a su surprise. Cinderella is turned into a prostitute. So I don't know why in my naivete I thought that this movie was rated like PG-13, but I did. And I definitely watched this movie when I was a kid, like below the age of 10. But... Julia Roberts is absolutely gorgeous. Richard Gere, such a silver fox, okay? Um, it's directed by Gary Marshall. Um, if Julia Roberts is the queen of romantic comedies, then Gary Marshall's like the emperor, right? Like He's like the emperor. He's definitely um, the one who started her on this journey of the romantic comedy queen. So, as you all know, I'm still fairly new to journaling, but I saw this bag and it both reminded me of the brown polka dot dress that she wears to the derby, but also the red dress that she wears to the opera. And so I wanted to incorporate this into the spread. Let me know in the comments when the first time you saw Pretty Woman was. So, I was unfamiliar with Richard Gere before this movie. I mean, I was all up nine or ten years old when it came out. So, of course, I never saw American Gigolo until much later in life. I was familiar with Julia Roberts because my mom was a big fan of the film Still Magnolias, as am I. I love that movie so much. Dolly Parton is amazing in that movie. The character of Tr True V is like one of the best all time iconic characters ever. <laughs> you know what, this, this gift bag paper is also very much giving like Minnie Mouse vibes. So, I apologize in advance for the Minnie Mouse vibes. If you look it up on the internet, it will say, in this modern update on Cinderella, a prostitute and a wealthy businessman fall hard for one another, forming an unlikely pair. Julia Roberts plays the character of Vivian Ward, and she meets Richard Gere's Eddie as he is driving his very expensive sports car down Hollywood Boulevard, and he can't drive. What is up with wealthy people with rich with rich and expensive cars, but yet they can't drive because they're not used to driving themselves? Meanwhile, the rest of us are just hoping for a good, you know, Toyota Corolla. So he pulls over and sees Vivian, or rather Vivian sees him struggling with his car. And he asks her for directions. And in one of my all time favorite moments of the film, she charges him $20 and he's astounded and appalled. And she says, I ain't the one lost. I love it, I love it, I love it. So she proceeds to 
get in his car and sees he can't drive so she has him pull over and she starts to drive in these killer boots these killer they're not really thigh high they're like above the knee boots held together with a safety pin and she drives to his hotel I think he's staying at the Wiltshire Hotel someone can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong and she's just gonna go on her merry way she's gotten him where he needs to go and he had no intention of paying for a date this evening but he sees her and decides that not only is she beautiful but she looks a little sad and helpless and so he invites her to come up to his penthouse room and the hotel they meet the iconic Hector Elizondo who's playing Barney the hotel manager and I just love the three of them together like it's just so magnificent it just truly is Barney will later on serve as her fairy godparent fairy godfather yes this glue is crazy cheap yes I got it from the dollar store you use what you have okay use what you have is my motto use what you have until you get more um, so you can kind of picture what happens from there but he finds Vivian enchanting and refreshing she's honest She's not suave and sophisticated. And he offers to have her stay. And once he has a taste of how this interaction will go, he decides he wants to have her hang around for the rest of the week because he has dinners and things to attend. And it would actually be good to have someone accompany him make him look good, you know, that kind of thing. So he pays her $3,000 to stay for the whole week. And she's like, yeah, of course, $3,000 to stay for the whole week. That's more money than I would make in a month, in her mind. And he's gonna buy her clothes and things like that. Oh my gosh, the iconic shopping scene where she goes into the store and they won't let her buy anything because they don't think she has the money for it and then she has to go back with him later and tells the girl you work on commission right big mistake <laughs> i love that part um later on in 1994 there would be a very similar scene to that in the selena movie is it 94? Maybe it's 96. Selena died in 94, I believe. So, yeah, like 96. Look what's back. Roses. Don't want to cover up the title. So. I know a lot of people add their embellishments later, but you know, I don't really think like that. So, I'm actually going to, I wrote some, some lines. I made them slightly bigger. Use them for my border. So anyway, they buy fancy clothes and then Barney teaches her how to dine correctly, which silverware to use, how to have polite conversation. You know, he's doing the whole fairy godfather type deal. And the whole time, Eddie is just falling in love with this girl because she's freaking Julia Roberts. But then... There's Richard Gage's friend, Stucky, 
played by Jason Alexander in one of the few Jason Alexander roles where I can't stand him. I know, shocking. And he is a complete jerk to her, especially when he finds out that she's a prostitute because now he thinks less of her. He thinks, at first he thinks, oh, she's just using Edward for his money. She's distracting him from all of these important business deals that we have going on. I don't like it. Now he's like, oh, she's using him and she can be used because she's a sex worker. So, hey, why don't I get a taste? And Vivian has to show him the hard way that no means no. You know, oddly enough, maybe because this was like pre-internet, but I don't remember people being like, oh my gosh, it's so woke. But like what people today quantify as woke, this movie was very woke for its time. Because she talks about rescuing the prince. She talks about wanting her own dreams and aspirations to be fulfilled. She defends herself. And, you know, yes, Edward has money and he can sweep her off her feet and he can take her out of this world that she's been in. But it's not like his world is all that better. And in the words of Vivian, you know, he's selling himself too. It's just a different type of sell. And it's like, yes, go girl, get it. So after Edward tells Stucky that Vivian is a peace-to-toot, okay, she's like, you know, you are treating me the way he treated me. He's like, I never treated you like a prostitute. And she's like, you just did. You just did. So she is ready to go in her happy, merry little way because she doesn't feel appreciated or valued. And she leaves. She's going to take her $3,000 that she made and she's going to go off on her own. But then, because he treats her so bad, she leaves the money. She's like, you know what? I don't even need that money. I can go back to school. I can get my own car, my own job, my own things. And I can do life on my own. And her friend Kit, Kit DeLuca, one of the best names in cinema ever, okay? Played by Laura San um, Giacomo. Oh my gosh. First of all, let me just talk about my girl Laura for a second because she scared the mess out of me when she was in um, The Stand, Stephen King's The Stand miniseries. Oh my gosh, her character was so scary to me. But in this, she is just like the most wonderful best friend ever. She's looking for out for her girl Vivian. She's telling him, remember, we don't kiss these guys on the lips. We get our money first. We don't take no mess from anybody. She is the ultimate girl boss, if ever there was one. Except for the fact that she's got a little bit of problem partying and a little bit of part problem with the snow. But, you know, she's going to look up to Vivian. She's going to make... A, a life for herself. We believe we believe that Kit DeLuca made it out of the trenches. Okay? So, eventually Edward realizes Oh, here we go. You can't charge me for directions. I can do anything I want to, baby. I ain't lost. Ah! I love it. Um. Oh my gosh. I barely talked about the night at the opera, the beautiful night at the opera where he gives her this beautiful necklace that is on loan. <laughs> it ain't his. And this beautiful iconic red dress with the white opera gloves. Stunning, stunning, stunning. I'm going to say that again. Stunning because she was absolutely stunning in that dress and takes her to the opera where she is transformed and it's it's just such a lovely moment. It really truly is. Like has there ever been a better date night in the history of film? I don't think so. I don't think there has been. You know what? I 
don't have this fancy tools or the patience to try to pull these jewels off because I was gonna just try to pull the red ones off. But I just need a little pizzazz, this, this particular picture. You know, it just needs a little something because this dress was just so iconic. So we're just gonna do that. There we go. That's lovely. A little shimmer, a little shine. But I love them going to the opera. Um, so anyhow, for as much as possible, Eddie and Vivian break up. But of course that can't be the end of it all because it is a romance, a true romance. They must end up together. And so he goes to get her and says, so what happened after he climbed up the tower and rescued her? She rescues him right back. Because she is saving him from a life of mediocrity and boredom with those boring, wealthy, gold digging women who were after him at the Derby. Hello. And they lived happily ever after. At least that's what I choose to believe. Now, this is the one true instance of when you can t turn a hooker into a housewife. But I don't know. I always felt like Vivian, because she was so good with cars, that she probably like opened her own shop. And then because Edward wanted to indulge her, but also because she's a wealthy millionaire, he was like, babe, how about I just buy you a chain of car, of car garages and you just manage them? You can put, your, you can put your, your head under the hood every once in a while. And she was like, okay, Eddie. That's probably what happened. But this movie is like, you really just can't get a better romantic comedy than Pretty Woman. The chemistry between Julia Roberts and Richard Gere was amazing. Um, so much so that you barely questioned the fact that he was at least a good 20 years older than her. It didn't matter because he is a silver fox. Didn't matter that she was like 20 when this movie was made. Didn't matter. Because she's gorgeous. Didn't matter. But I always feel like the thing that really makes an iconic romantic comedy, or really just any movie in general, is the music. There's a scene where she's taking a bath and she's listening to Kiss by Prince. Then of course, the theme song of the movie, Roy Orbison, Oh Pretty Woman. Why did I not know that this is what this man looked like? It's like, he is doing the whole like Elvis thing, isn't he? I wonder who did it first. Was it Elvis or was it Roy? The world may never know. And for a while, everyone was doing the bathtub scene with a person in the bathtub singing badly with headphones on. So very dangerous. It must have been love, but it's over now. Like, this soundtrack is so 80s, late 80s coded, but so good. And the songs all match. And yes, I just messed up that album cover. It's okay, because I don't even want to put that there. Don't even want to put that there anymore. I want to put it right here. It must have been love, but it's over now.
But my favorite song of the movie, Natalie Cole, the iconic songstress herself, May She Rest in Peace, daughter of Nat King Cole, Wild Women Do, Wild Women Do, and They Don't Regret It. I know I can't sing. Ain't anybody ask you all that. I ain't ask you all that. But no, seriously, this movie is top tier, great acting, great cinematography, great music, great direction from Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall was just such a complete and utter amazing director. Like The Princess Diaries. Pretty Woman, Runaway Bride. There have has there ever been a better romantic comedy director? I don't think there has been. And I don't know that there will be ever again. Ooh, look at that. Fancy, aren't we? But yeah, so. You know, this is just quickly becoming one of my favorite little pastimes. Talking to you guys about movies that I love as I journal and commemorate them. Don't you worry about the fact that that paper just fell on the floor. Oh, I don't even want to take this off. I feel like this is almost like the, the note that Kit left for, Vivian left for Kit. Why did I just look up the score for this movie on Rotten Tomatoes and the score is 65%? Sometimes I just can't with that site. I just can't. 65% on Rotten Tomatoes? I mean, it's still positive, but... Definitely feel like it should be higher. So, let me know in the comments what your favorite scene from the film is. Bonus points for your favorite quote. And let's do a poll. Pretty woman or runaway bride. Which is the better Richard Gere and Julia Roberts team up? Can't wait to see what you guys say. I'm going overboard with the jewels. I know it. You know it. You see what's happening here. Okay.
Is that little bit going to bother me? Of course it is. Am I going to do anything about it? Of course I'm not. I do not mind there being roses galore on this collage because I feel like it fits with the end of the movie where he comes with the roses and the limousine to win her back. going to rate Pretty Woman. A plus. For love. <laughs> All right, guys. So there we have it. Here is my second entry into my movie journal, 1990's Pretty Woman, starring Richard Gere, Julia Roberts, Jason Alexander, and Laura San Giacomo, directed by Gary Marshall, runtime 119 minutes, rated R, it's not for the kiddos, oh, no, no. but it is quintessential romantic comedy viewing you have to see it has the big gesture at the end and yeah there's that so let me know what you think in the comments and i'll see you guys at the next video bye